Good morning and welcome back to the Herefordshire Gardener channel. My name's Aaron. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do rose cuttings. I've had a lot of questions in recent weeks on how to do rose cuttings so I thought it would be best to do a video just to show you the steps that I take and hopefully um, that'll give you more confidence and get you on the way to doing your own cuttings. The propagation method that I'm going to be using today is stem cuttings. Um, there are other propagation methods, um, but this is the one that I'm going to focus on today. Before we go any further, I just want to briefly mention um, about plant patents and intellectual property rights. So most breeders rely on plant variety rights um, to protect their investment. So if they you know, come up with a new variety that they've run through vigorous trials over many, many years, um, we usually talk in 10 plus years before they come to market. Um, they will register a, a patent on this plant and um, they'll have sole rights for propagation and sale of that plant. Um, in the UK, I understand that's 25 years um, from when the patent was filed. Um, so just make sure that you do your own research and check out, you know, websites like helpfindme.com. Um, to make sure that you're not breaking any laws. This is the rose that I'm going to be propagating today. If you haven't already guessed, this is a Crown a Princess Margarita, bred and introduced by David Austin in 1999 in the UK. She's named after Queen Victoria's great granddaughter. I feel like one of those guys on QVC I'm showing you some, some diamonds. Honestly, she is worthy of um, being shown off the way that I'm doing right now because she's simply stunning. Fortunately, she's retired in the UK, so you can no longer purchase her at the garden centres and nurseries. She has the wonderful traditional cupped um, Old English rose shaped bloom. And look at those apricots in the middle there, which pale to an orange and then a yellow on the outside petals. Absolutely gorgeous, um, stunning, stunning. She looks like she's dancing on the top of my hands right now. Wonderful, wonderful she rose to around about five foot and she has um, lovely sort of long arching stem. So she will need a little bit of support, um, but the blooms tend to be held upright. So in sort of prime position for you to see and admire. Um, she also has lovely, I don't know if you can see behind me, um, green, dark green, glossy foliage. And I think the dark green really complements this um, apricot orange bloom really really well it sort of gives a lovely backdrop and, and they really do stand out these blooms at any time in the day particularly in the evening um so yeah absolutely wonderful rose the best part which i've not mentioned so far is her scent um oh my god i wish this video had smell a vision because this is just insane oh she's so 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 strong um, I get um, sort of strong, fruity, sherbet-y sort of smell to her. Oh, can't get enough. She's just so, so nice. Um, she was recently featured on Gardener's World 2023 um, last month in June. Wonderful, wonderful rose. If you haven't got her in your collection, I would recommend getting her. So I'm now going to go on to explain how I do um, my cuttings, what you're going to need, how we prepare the cuttings and what we do uh, moving forward. If you do enjoy these videos and you'd like to be notified when I upload more, please just give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. So here are the things that you'll need to do the cuttings today. So we've got blank labels there and a Sharpie pen. Really, really important to label any cuttings that you do. It's always good housekeeping to do this. If, like me, you do cuttings regularly, it's easy to forget what you've put in to which pot. Um, and then you've got a long time to wait until the plant regrows and blooms before you can re-ID it. So from the get-go, just make sure um, that you're labelling things up. Um, a resharpened, clean pair of secateurs. And so I've sharpened those this morning, so I've got a nice sharp edge on the blade. Um, and I've disinfected them with an alcohol um, rub. This alcohol rub um, is good because it stops the blades from rusting and it stops corrosion on the blades and it does exactly what I want it to do. So they are clean of any bacteria or viruses. 
um, you'll need your rooting powder. This is optional. Some people don't use rooting powder, um, a rooting hormone, should I say, or rooting powder for roses. Um, but I tend to use it on all of mine. Um, I've got a sort of fresh pot here and I decant into an empty pot um, just so that I don't, you know, when I'm dipping my stems into this one, you know, they, they will be wet and you can essentially contaminate your rooting powder. So fresh always stays in there and I decant into just an empty pot. You can use anything really. This is an old rooting pot um, and it's perfect size. Just means that I can tap the um, stems once I've dipped them to shake off any excess. Um, I always have a rubbish bag with me um, just because as you are cutting the material you're going to have bits that you're not going to use and I like to just get rid of that and keep my workspace tidy. Um, somewhere to pop your cuttings when you are done. I've just got some tall rose pots here. Um, any vessel will do, any pot, any tub, as long as it's got good drainage um, and um, you know, as long as you're not putting them into something that is completely soaking sodden wet and puddled with water. Uh, and then, of course, finally, you need your rose um, that you're going to propagate. And in this case, as already mentioned, we've got the Crown Princess Margarita. Um, so I took those cuttings about half an hour ago um, and they're sitting in a bucket of water. So I actually took that bucket out with me and um, filled it to about halfway with water and as I cut the stems from the plant um, from the main rose shrub I stuck them straight into um, the bucket and then brought the bucket into the workshop when I've finished. Just as a little tip um, when you go to your um, rose shrub in the garden and you're ready to take your cuttings your stem cuttings um, your length should I say um, it's always better um, to cut back to a leaf junction with a leaf that has five leaflets so you can see this one that I'm holding now has five and what will happen is this um, dormant bud I don't know if the camera's picking it up well there's a small little purple dot between the stem and that leaf down inside there um, if you cut above this so I would cut this stem at an angle 45 degrees about here and what that will do is that will cause that sleeping bud to wake up and that's where your new stems will grow and you'll get new blooms such as a second or third flush depending how far in the season you are. Um, so that's where I would take the stems back. In terms of the length, it doesn't really matter. Um, you shape the shrub how you want it to be shaped. With Crown Princess, because she's already got those long arching stems, um, and I don't have her particularly tied in at the moment. I've gone a little bit further back on her so that when she re-sprouts out, those new long arching stems won't be on top of already existing long arching stems because otherwise she's just going to look, um, yeah, very, very leggy and, and all over the place. And so that's just a little tip for when you're taking off of the mother stock plant and it just ensures that your main rose looks tidy and when she's reblooming, that those blooms are held and poised in the perfect position for you to enjoy them. So in these pots here is just a multi-purpose compost um, bought from my local gardening store. Um, <clears throat> this is perfectly fine. It works well for me in the past. Um, it drains well and that's the key thing here. I want it to be moist like as moist as a damp dishcloth that's been wrung out. I, but I don't want it to be absolutely soaking wet. Um, if the mixture is too wet, when you put your cuttings in there, they're more likely to rot before they root. So we just want a little bit of moisture, but not absolutely wringing wet. So again, it, it stresses the importance of having good drainage in the bottom of whatever vessel you're using. Because if you don't have the drainage, the water's going to sit and sitting water is just going to encourage rot. If you want, you can amend um, the soil with a substance known as perlite. And for anybody who's not aware, this is perlite. Um, and, and what you can purchase this from most garden stores. Um, this mixed with the soil at say a 50 to 50 ratio will actually open the soil up a bit um, and it will enable more oxygen to get down into um, the mixture, which will help promote roots and keep them healthy. But it'll also aid with drainage of water. Um, so that's the pots and the mixture. Really important that when you are cutting your roses um, in the garden, when you're deadheading, um, when you're taking stems for propagation, 
um, and when you're actually propagating that you've got a recently sharpened pair of pruners that have been disinfected um, it's really really good housekeeping to, to stick to this principle because what it does is having a nice sharp blade um, will mean that you get a nice clean cut across um, your your rose stem rather than it being crushed um, because a crushed stem is likely to become diseased whereas a clean cut it, it'll survive better for you and you know disinfecting them because plants just like humans carry diseases from bacteria fungus viruses using a quaternary disinfectant and i always use an alcohol based one because it doesn't corrode um my my blades on my um secateurs what that does is that just means that you're starting um you know with a clean pair of shears and you're less likely therefore to transfer disease between your it is important um that you are regularly sharpening your secateurs whichever ones you have um just because they will blunt over time um particularly as they get wet if you're not looking after them properly um just keeping them sort of well oiled um bit of wd-40 i use on these ones um but they will blunt over time obviously as you um, continue to use them to prune and deadhead and cut um, so it is important to keep them sharpened there are a few products available on the market this here um, by draper is a, a tungsten um, sharpening tool and essentially what you do with this is you just sort of at a 45 degree angle in line with the angle of the blade you just move this up so holding these in the other hand or in a firm position you just sharpen your blade like this and the tungsten will, um, because it's stronger than the steel in the blade, it will actually, um, you know, it'll sharpen it and bring it back up to a, a nice sharp edge. Alternatively, you can use, you know, one of these knife blocks that you do to sharpen your knives with. I prefer this method just because um, <clears throat> these are very easy to take apart. They're only a cheap pair of secateurs. You know, this is not like the Felco brand, which is um on my shopping list um felco has got really good reviews but these ones work just as well for now so i undo the nut on the back take out the pin take the spring off and then i'm left with two pieces two halves to these secateurs um, and then using each half i can run them at the right angle um on this block and this this just works really really well it's super easy they're easy to get apart and easy to put back together with a pair of pliers that's all that you need i thought it might be worth just pointing out the different type of secateurs on the market um just in case you're using the wrong ones so these are what we call bypass secateurs so you can see a bit like a pair of scissors um the blades actually bypass one another so when you're cutting um the stem is actually um getting cut as the blades come together um, and then obviously getting um, severed at that point. There are other cutters out, and this one is known as an anvil cutter, and as you can see, they're not actually bypassing the blades. The top blade is hitting the cutting first, the stem, and it's pushing it against the back um, plate and, and then making the cut. Um, this is better for sort of more mature shrubs and woodier plants or dead material that's harder to cut. Um, because it doesn't matter so much um, that you're putting a crushing force, if you would, um, on the material. It will take better to that. Whereas if you use this on a fresh rose stem, it's more likely to just crush the stem. Um, so always better when you're doing your deadheading, when you're doing your pruning, um, and when you are doing your, um, your cuttings to be using um, bypass secateurs these are the labels all done up so on there you can see crown princess margarita on one side and on the other side i've just put today's date which is when the cuttings were taken uh, and that'll just help me for future reference so when it comes to doing um the cuttings what you need to be taking out is one of your stems uh, which i have here say hi um <clears throat> and you know, really, we, we need to discard, sadly, the um, blooms at the end because they're not going to form part of the cutting material. Um, you can repurpose them, stick them in a small vase, which is what I'm going to do with these today. Um, but you want to be going back to your first set of five leaves on the stem. Um, for me, that's down here. You can see the top set of leaves um, has only got three leaflets 
and then if you move a bit further down you can see we've got the five so with the secateurs it's been cleaned i'll just make a small cut um, at a 45 degree angle away from the bud if you look inside there we have a new bud um, in that leaf junction um, we're going to be cutting at 45 degrees away from that i'll just show you what that looks like so we're left with a 45 degree cut here and um, that is away from the the bud that's inside there and that just means if this gets wet for whatever reason condensation for example um, that water is going to drip away and not onto this bud um, so that forms the top part of our cutting um, for this particular um, stem well then what we need to do what I do generally speaking is I'll count down two sets of leaves and then when I get to the bottom set I'll make a cut um, again on a 45 degree angle exactly the same as the um, top cutting and I'll just cut there so I've now got a cut that's 45 there 45 at the bottom I'll remove the, the leaves um, from the lowest point and the middle point leaving the upper leaves intact and to remove the rose leaves the easiest way to do it is just to go to the point where it connects to the stem and just push down you push down like that and it should come away nice and cleanly and um, that one was a bit hard but generally they're not as hard so if you just push down like that they'll come off so we've now got a section of stem okay um 45 degree cut top 45 degree cut at the bottom still got a remaining set of leaves on there i will reduce these leaves by taking them down to just a pair of two so we've now got just a pair of two leaves on there um, and just a little bit of information um, about these junctions. These are what we call leaf nodes. So wherever a leaf um, came off of the main stem, that area in that stem is known as a leaf node. Uh, and what that means is this is an area on the plant with which new growth can occur. OK, so it isn't going to occur in the middle of the stem because this is not a node. This is known as an internodal section. We're interested in the nodes or the leaf nodes. Um, they contain a, a, a collection of cells that are very similar. I don't know if you've heard of human stem cells. Um, so they have the ability to these cells to grow into different parts that the plant might require. For example, a new shoot, blooms, new leaves, and even new roots. And it's the, the idea that it, they can turn into new roots that we are um, exploiting here to get a completely new plant. And um, this cutting will do everything it can to survive and grow. Um, so moving on a little bit from that then, um, so we've we've got our prepared cutting. What I tend to do on the bottom of the cutting down by this um, lowest leaf node is I will take my blades on my secateurs and hold them open. Uh, and what I'll do, and just looking here, I've just got a thumb on one side, I've got them anchored, and I'm just using this blade a bit like a Stanley knife. And I want to just injure the lower part of the stem. If you look there, I don't know if this is focusing. You can see I've just stripped off just a little bit um, of the um, outer layer of the stem um, to, to expose something known as the cambium layer, which is the layer directly underneath the outer surface of the stem. And this is the area where um, the roots are going to grow from. Um, when you injure a stem like this, the plant essentially um, recovers with a scar something known as a callus or callus tissue um, looks a bit like um, dried sugar um, when it's finished scarring up and um, it's from that callus material that scar tissue that plant scar tissue that the new roots will come out so you know I will just wound this a couple of times um, and what that's done you see is it's given me um, a couple of wounds on the plant um you can see that there so this here is the wounded stem you can see i've not gone all the way around i've got my 45 degree cut which acts as a wound and then i've got a couple of sections 
um, around the base of the stem that is also acting as a wound. So once you've done that, just take your rooting powder and just coat the bottom of those cuts. I just give it a little tap in there. And as you can see, we've got rooting powder on all of those surfaces. And that's just gonna help to stimulate and tell the plant that we need to grow roots in this section. So before you stick the stem into the soil, just make sure the soil is firm enough. So don't push your, your hand all the way in to make it like a concrete block, but enough so that there's contact in the soil. And then with your cutting, you just simply place it down the side of the pot. You only need to pop it in about an inch. You don't want too much of the stem um, inside um, the pot because that's when it's more likely um, to rot. So we just want it about an inch in, as long as that um, section that we've injured and the lowest leaf node junction is in the pot, in the, in the soil, then um, we should be absolutely fine. And that's your first cutting done guys. And you just repeat the process and which I'm gonna go through again just to show you. So here's the same piece that we've just cut from. Um, as you can see, the top section's no good anymore. We need to go down to the next set of five leaves, which you can see um, is a bit further down. Just look at those um, gorgeous, glossy green leaves. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so with your secateurs, same again, 45 degree cut just above the set of five leaves. So you can see we've got a 45 degree cut there. We've got our top set of leaves there. Just like before, we're gonna count down two sets of leaves from that now. So one and two is down here. And then below that third set of leaves, we're just gonna do another 45 degree cut. I'll just remove this bottom leaf so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my finger where the bottom set of leaves are and I'm just gonna do a 45 degree cut next to that. Okay, so now I've got my rose cutting with three leaves still attached and like before, we're just gonna take the bottom leaf off. We're gonna take the middle leaf off. Don't worry about the thorns, just leave them on. It's not a problem. And the top leaves, remember, we're reducing to just two leaves. And the reason that we reduce all of these leaves is because, you know, plants um, through a process known as transpiration actually take water up through the roots. This water moves through the stems, through the leaves and out through tiny little openings known as stomata underneath the leaf edges. Um, and then obviously that water evaporates into the atmosphere. So when you do cuttings, you've removed the roots immediately from the plant. That's what we're trying to encourage to grow. So it makes logical sense to remove um, much of the leaves because otherwise this plant material is gonna dry out quicker than it can absorb water because there are no roots yet. So that's why we reduce the number of leaves just to reduce that loss um, by transpiration. Um, there's enough leaves there and there's also the green stem that the plant can still um, photosynthesize, that is to take sunlight and make energy, which it's gonna need to make its roots um, in, in these leaves and the stem that's there. So that's more than adequate. You could even get away with just leaving one leaflet on there. It really wouldn't be a problem. So like before, uh, we're gonna go, just be careful with the thorns. Um, I probably should be wearing gloves, um, but you know, take your secateurs. Again, if you look at that bottom um, leaf node down there, all I'm gonna do is just score that, just to take a little bit off on that side and a little bit off on that side. And as you can see, I've nicely wounded that. And then I'm just gonna take this. If you want, you can take off the lower thorn just by snapping them off. That will also create another wound a bit further up and it's exposing that cambium layer again, uh, where the roots are gonna grow from. So once you're ready, what you need to do is take your rooting powder and just make sure you've coated all those exposed ends, give it a tap off. And as you can see, we've got plenty of powder on there. Same again, go to the outside of your pot. Next, maybe an inch away from your other rose, just pop it in, put a bit of downward pressure on the stem, about an inch, an inch in there. And that's that one done as well. And what I'll do is I will fill these pots with the cutting material that I've got and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. One other thing that I forgot to mention is ideally your stems need to be 
sort of just slightly thinner than your little finger, about pencil width um, gives the best results. So if you can select stems that are about pencil width, um, that should give you um, the best um, chance of So breathing. here's a prepared section, just in a bit more detail. So you can see we've got the 45 degree cut at the top. Um, inside there is the sleeping bud at the leaf node. I've removed one set of leaves from here, another set of leaves from the bottom. I've also taken this thorn off. And then, as I mentioned, with my clean blades, I've just injured slightly in a few places, just taken that very thin layer of cambium. You don't want to go too deep with this. You just want to take off a bit like what a potato peeler would do. Um, in fact, you could use a potato peeler for this step if you wanted to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this into the rooting hormone. Just make sure that that's coated. See, it's not quite coated all the way up there and that's where I want it to be. So I'm just give it a little shake, tap off the excess. And you can see we've got plenty of coverage there now. And then as I mentioned earlier, I've already firmed down this compost. I'm just going to pop it in so that the bottom node and that cut end goes in. And just give it a little tuck in. And that's it. Just um, watered these with a watering can. As you can see, um, the water's dripping from the bottom of the pot. I'll hold this pot on an angle for a while and just give it a shake because I want that excess water to come out. It's important once you've watered them in at the very end, it's the final step. Um, you want to just make sure that these are well and truly drained of any excess moisture. So I'll just pop them in a tray um, and leave them for a, about five minutes just to drain out any excess. And by giving them that sort of shake and, and having them on a slight 45 degree angle, you encourage more of the water to come out and so just giving it a shake there like that. So now these pots are drained, they're a lot lighter um, than when I first put the water in. They've been sat now for a good sort of five minutes, um, just draining the excess. You can see there's nothing coming out in the bottom of this tray, so I know that they are fully drained. One of the things that I did with these two pots is I had one in one hand and one in the other, and just out in the garden, I just swung them. Uh, and by swinging them, you can see it just helps get the water out of the pot. You might look a bit silly doing it, but if it means that you've got just the right amount of moisture left in this pot um, to avoid rot and to help them root, then it's, it's definitely worth it. So the final, final step um, that I take just to give them the best start really moving forward. Um, this is the only time that I will use um, an antifungal um, solution. Um, so this is just rose clear mixed as per the instructions. Um, and what I'll do is I'll spray these, the leaves and the top of the soil. And what that'll do is it'll just um, ward off any um, fungus that might try rotting these um, from the top um, before they uh, have a chance to root and start defending themselves. So I'll just um, sort of lightly spray that coating the area. I don't want to drench these and not trying to re-wet the soil. I'm just trying to give just an even fine coat um, on the stems, on the leaves, on the soil, and that's enough. You really don't need very much. So when you've done everything that we've gone through so far, you just need to make sure um, that you're popping your cuttings into a tub, um, a plastic box, something that's going to stop any rainwater from getting into them and re-wetting them and potentially soaking them. Um, I've got here just a um, container propagator um, which comes with, I'll show you in a second, a plastic dome that goes on the top. It's quite a large one is this one. You can see I've got some earlier cuttings that I did. Gertrude Jekyll there, unmistakable spiky thorns. I've got a few other plants that I'm propagating in here, some Mexican orange um, blossom and some skimmia japonica which both smell absolutely amazing. Um, so this is Crown Princess Margarita. How many did we get there? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I would encourage you 
to take more than what you think you might need because inevitably some of them are going to rot. Um, and what I'd say is, you know, every one to two days, just make sure you're checking on them. Um, if you do see any dying leaves or any leaves that are falling into the pot or into the surrounding area, just remove them because they'll just encourage um, mould to grow and that mould could then infect your rose cuttings. So um, just double check on them, make sure that they've not dried out. They shouldn't have done. Um, this propagate a very, very important step. Um, should never ever receive any direct sunlight. Um, direct sunlight in this environment with a dome on will turn this into a cooker um, and these will absolutely bake and die uh, very, very quickly. Um, so plenty of overhead light if you look up, lots of sky up there. But this area, I'm absolutely certain, um, doesn't get any direct sun, so there'll be no sun rays hitting this. Um, but maximum light above and that's exactly the environment that you need um, to you know provide the perfect um, specifications for these to start to root and survive until then um, so I'll pop the lid back on I'll show you what that looks like so this is the vessel with the dome on the top I really like this one because it's quite deep um, so you've got a deep base on it and you've got a nice deep top and also it comes with built-in venters so I don't actually ever have to take the lid off of this one which is great um, because actually um, the top cover doesn't come over the bottom cover meaning that rainwater could potentially get into this so what I've done is just with some cheap cling film I've just run that around the side so any rain coming there will just run straight off in order to vent this I just open these and that'll allow some fresh air and I'll do that maybe once every couple of days. But as you can see, she's tucked away in there absolutely fine. Doesn't need any other fuss now other than just to keep an eye on, you know, anything that needs removing, any mould, any dying canes. If you see any that have gone black, just pull them out um, so that you don't get any of that spread into the ones that are healthy. Um, but it is literally as simple as that and they should root within about six to eight weeks um, this time of year. And that is your semi-hardwood cutting technique from start to finish. So as you can see, this is a Crown Princess Margarita um, that I did cuttings of um, about two weeks ago. Um, looks pretty much the same as the ones that we've just put in. However, if you look closely, you can see that the dormant bud is starting to wake up on this one which is a really good sign um, that you know we don't have any dieback or any black canes the leaves are still healthy um, and it's looking like this one could be promising and we might actually have a new plant at the end of this process I think you can never really tell even when some cuttings look really good um, you know you don't always you're not always guaranteed to have 100% success these could still fail, so it's just about keeping them in that environment that I've mentioned and just keep checking on them. They shouldn't need um, rewatering. I haven't rewatered this, and you can see that's perfectly moist still. Um, when you have a closed tub or container, it will condense inside, and that's perfectly normal. That'll be enough moisture for these until they start to root. I'll give you some more updates um, in the coming weeks, and we'll see what happens with these and the ones that we've done today. Take care.